welcome to the show Social Security Securing Today and Tomorrow. I am your host, Diana Varela. And just in case you have not watched any of the previous shows, I invite you to visit Montgomery Municipal Cable to watch the previous shows. And of course, in the previous shows, we provide you with a lot of information about retirement and other benefits. But also, we talk about we need to get ready for retirement, have other sources of income if possible. And have you ever wondered what type of incomes will impact your social security benefits? Today we have a show that will answer all of those questions for you. And with me is our guest, Alfredo Navarro. Thank you, Deanna. Alfredo, welcome. Alfredo is the district manager in the Alexandria Social Security Office. And Alfredo, you and I have worked in the same office for a little while, many, many years ago. Absolutely. I know, I know you've been working for the agency for a while. That's right. I've been with the agency for about 20 years, Deanna. And uh, I've been in a range of roles mm -hmm. from a customer service representative to a uh, claims representative. Uh, I've also been an assistant district manager, a district manager, a deputy area director, and, and again, a district manager currently in Alexandria, Virginia. So exactly. it's been a great ride. I know, and I remember when you and I were claims representatives in the right. same office, and we always got questions from our clients in regards to what type of incomes impact Social Security. Um, yes. Pensions, they always have the, the question, does my employer pension impact my social security benefits? Absolutely, and th those are great questions. Everybody has them. Mm -hmm. um, and they're great questions for building a good, secure financial plan. But does, you, does my employer pension or uh, employer sponsor plan affect my social security benefits? Well, in a simple answer, it all depends what kind of plan and mm -hmm. pension it is. So we can dive into that in a little bit. Absolutely, but nowadays most employer pension plans will not impact the benefits, so it, it, it's great. Um, and sometimes when people retire from an employer, uh, they might receive some special payments. Uh, for example, if they uh, accumulated leave that they did Correct. not use. Will those special payments impact Social Security benefits? So, great question. Special wage payments or special payments, mm -hmm. uh, such as those that are accumulated based on annual leave mm -hmm. or sick leave, um, those are usually accumulated based on your own wages, which are covered by Social Security. And if and most employers, and if you're working mm -hmm. for one of these employers, you're not going to be affected. Now, if it's based on an employer that does not pay into a Social Security system uh, or does not um, have a qualified plan, it may affect you. But those are far and few these days. Today, most plans are qualified per the mm -hmm. IRS, such as plans like the 401k or a 43b or a 401a, like the thrift savings plan for the federal government. For example, all the savings that go into those retirement plans are qualified savings. So again, those do not affect your Social Security benefits. It is uh, good to know because most definitely, sometimes when employees retire from an employer, they still have you know, some payments that are due to them, right. not for actual earnings, right. but actually monies that the employers own to them. Absolutely. Right? And you mentioned a little bit about 401k plans and, you know, in different companies, different employees, they, mm -hmm. they, they take a different name, right. but it's still the same concept. Correct. Do any 401k plan impact social security benefits? So, uh, great question. And I will answer that very directly. 401k plans are qualified plans per the 401 IRS code. And there's different iterations of that 401 section. Mm -hmm. Now, most of those plans, because you've put monies into those plans that were based on social security wages, they have no impact on your actual social security benefits. The beauty of saving on a 401k plan or a 401a mm -hmm. plan, 403b plan for that matter, is that when you take out those uh, those monies, uh, those distributions, while they may have some taxability that we're not going to talk about, but those are things that you would talk with your accountant. When you take out those distributions, those are based on, again, Social Security wages. So there is no impact on your Social Security benefit. Mm -hmm. And of course, 
we've been talking about the person having other incomes upon retirement besides pensions, besides 401k plans. What about if a person has investments or savings, Alfredo? What about rental income, Absolutely. royalties? Absolutely. Rental income is great. It's a great uh, mm -hmm. foundation for a good financial plan and it should be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. But rental income has absolutely mm -hmm. no issue with your social security benefit. There's no impact there. Royalties as well from dividends. If you get a dividend yield from a stock or from an electronic mm -hmm. tra trader fund, there is no impact on your social security benefit. Any other income that you built up as a result of a business that you had after you retire or any rental income or any limited uh, partnerships that you created, to funnel some of your business income through, that does not affect your social security benefits. Why? Because those are monies that are earned. So mm -hmm. that's the key point. If those are income or wages that are earned and you pay social security taxes on them or you pay your taxes on them, then it does not affect your social security benefit. Yes, okay, it, it's good to know because once again, we really would like for our viewers to be ready. and. Despite Social Security providing uh, the, the major source of income for most of our beneficiaries, for about 33 per, you know, of our beneficiaries, right. um, we provide you know, about 33% of the income for uh, the elderly. Correct. And it is estimated that for about 50% of married couples and 70% of married couples, uh, we represent 50% of the total income. But there is always the question, is that income enough? Is that income enough? So, And that all depends on your lifestyle. Yes. But to your point, I just want to point one thing out is that you know, Social Security is just basically a foundation to a good mm -hmm. solid financial plan. We're not exactly. the all of the financial plan. You should always think about, as we talked about rental income and royalties and stocks, mm -hmm. uh, you always need to think about what are the other parts of your overall financial plan? Retirement savings, pensions, there's different mm -hmm. types of pensions out there, and what are your own investments? And so exactly. that's really what forms the full circle of a good financial plan. And nowadays we have that some of our beneficiaries actually would like to work and receive social security benefits. And there is a lot of misconceptions in regards to working and receiving benefits. What yes. can you tell us about that? Oh my God, that is a, <laughs> that is a point of conversation <laughs> that we get all the time. And let me just share this. Uh, yes, you can receive social security benefits between ages 62 and 67 and still work, even though you're still under full retirement age. There is an allowable limit is tested on a monthly basis or on a yearly basis. Mm -hmm. And that's stated on our website at www.ssa.gov. It changes year to year, set by Congress. Correct. So most of our viewers can definitely go there and take a look at that. But you can work up to that allowable limit and still receive all of your benefits. Now, if you go above the limit, mm -hmm. the, there will be a reduction of benefits. And it's set there as well. It's actually stated on the website so you can do the calculation. And I'm not talking about those whole numbers because the income will be different for everyone. Correct. So you have to do your own calculation. But yes, the answer is you can work. Now, after full retirement age, based on the year of birth, mm -hmm. whatever that applies to you, your full retirement age means this to you. You can work every second of the day and earn a million dollars if you mm -hmm. want every single second after full retirement age. And the great thing is this, it does not affect your benefit yes. whatsoever. So it's great. Now, some individuals choose to wait till age 70 and then take their distribution mm -hmm. from Social Security at that time. That's okay too. But to the point that you were making, yes, you can work and still receive your Social Security benefit. Exactly. And just for people that are watching the video, mm -hmm. in the year 2020, Correct. if you are between 62 and your full retirement age, we allow you to make 18240 so That is a, yes. If by a chance you are watching this uh, video in another year that is not 2020, right. we invite you to visit us online, right. socialsecurity.gov, because they can get the amount of the earnings that we allow them to have. And now tell me a little bit about those earnings, the allowable amount. 
uh, do these uh, mean really strictly earnings, meaning the person still working? What about self-employment? Great question. Mm -hmm. um, and that is usually a distinction that has to be made. What <coughs> if I decide to go into business for myself mm -hmm. in my retirement years? Mm -hmm. Well, can I still do that yes. and still receive my Social Security benefit? Mm -hmm. The answer is yes. yes. And what we look at, the distinction is, wages are from an employer, an employer-employee mm -hmm. relationship, mm -hmm. and the employer and the employee actually split the Social Security tax at 6.2% each, and then the 1.4% for Medicaid. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, when we look at self-employment income, we look at your actual net earnings from self-employment, mm -hmm. not at your total gross. And it's very important that we make that distinction because it could be that your gross amount would have been, say, 34000 or $50,000, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but you had expenses to run exactly. that business. So you take out those expenses, and then you end up with what we actually call your net earnings from self-employment. Mm -hmm. The good thing is that the IRS actually has the form that you filed, the SC schedule, that walks you right through it and it allows you to figure out what that amount is. Yeah. So you pay your taxes. Now, when you're self-employed, the difference is that you bear the full 15%. So you pay your total Social Security mm -hmm. tax, which is fine. It's good to pay your yes. taxes. Of but course. But when you do that, you still get to earn money. And the, the great thing about engaging in work activity after retirement or during retirement years is that you also engage in social activity. So yes. that's also a gain to you. Exactly. And, but, but it's good for everybody to know that either it's self-employment, you work in regular employment. Yes, you can work Absolutely. and receive Social Security benefits. And, Absolutely. Uh, we definitely allow all of our beneficiaries to work. It's just that depending on the type of benefits that they get and also their age, as right. you mentioned, you are your full retirement age. You can earn that million dollars. Right and I still receive your benefits. Absolutely. Okay, we have to go to a short break, okay. and, uh, but we will come back and talk about the incomes that impact your Social Security benefits. Uh, stay with us. There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but one of the teachers was uh, Miss Araceli. She gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing and she'll sit there with you until you get it. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Thank you for staying with us. We're talking with Alfredo Navarro the district manager of the Alexandria Social Security Office, and we are talking about the different type of incomes that we would like to recommend you have upon retirement. Mm -hmm. And of course, we talk about Alfredo uh, pensions, private pensions, uh, 401k plans. That's right. We talked uh, about different investments that are available to mm -hmm. individuals. And, and the pensions, where they come from, federal, state, local government. Exactly. We also talk about earnings because people correct. can work and receive benefits. That's correct? right. And there's two types of earnings. There's wages mm -hmm. and then there are net earnings from self-employment as well. Exactly. Either you work for regular employment or self-employment, please know that, yes, you can work and receive benefits at the same time. And if you are full retirement age... That's right. You can earn <laughs> a million dollars a second and it has no effect on you. Okay, that is great to know. Now, Alfredo, um, we talked about pensions before, Correct. and for most employers nowadays, most employees pay into the Social Security system. But in our area, Alfredo, the federal government is one of the largest employers that we have. Correct. And the federal government have different options in regards to pensions depending on when their employees started working for the government. Absolutely. Can you tell us about federal government employees that work or are still working for the government mm -hmm. under the old retirement system? So uh, that's a great question, and, and we are mm -hmm. in, in the heartland of the federal government. This is yes. Washington, D.C., where most agencies are headquartered. And so there are two types, really, of uh, offsets, if you will, but we have uh, two pension systems for the federal government. We have what we call the 
they're referred to as the old civil service mm -hmm. retirement system, and now we have the new federal employee retirement system, FERS. Mm -hmm. So CSRS and FERS. Uh, and those that work on their FERS after 1986, they're not affected by any of this because they're, they're paying automatically into Social Security. Uh, their wages are covered wages by Social Security. But those that worked on the CSRS, for the most part, do not have coverage. Now, let me make a clear distinction because CSRS is, is kind of an interesting uh, system. There are employees that came to work for the federal government mm -hmm. after having worked in the private sector. They worked in the private sector for 10, 15 years. They might have had some military service uh, past uh, 1957 when wages became automatically mm -hmm. covered. And so they earned their 40 quarters or, mm -hmm. or a little bit more than that. And then they came to work for the federal government. They wanted to continue their professional careers there. So those individuals are covered by Social Security, but then they went on to work for civil ser for the government on their civil service, had a full career, retired from the government, and now here's the mm -hmm. conundrum. They have <laughs> what? They have covered wages, and now they have a pension that's not that's based on non-covered mm -hmm. wages. So we have to do this offset, and it's called the windfall elimination provision. And that's where the offset comes in. Now, if the individual has more than 30 years, then there's a slight reduction, but not much. And it, I think it's only about uh, a 10% reduction on if that. If they've had the 30 years of substantial earnings, there is actually there, no there reduction. There's actually no reduction. It's one of the exceptions. Correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, so that is one of the exceptions. Uh, but those individuals are only work for civil service, under mm -hmm. the civil service retirement system. They, unfortunately, they are going to have any offset if they are eligible to some or a partial amount of Social Security benefits. Now, if they're the spouse of somebody else mm -hmm. who actually worked in the private sector and they're okay. saying, wait, I have options, now I can apply as a spouse. Mm -hmm. Well, there is another offset for that. It's called the government pension offset. And this applies to those individuals that are spouses of individuals that have Social Security benefits based on their own wages. But these individuals that are applying as spouses have a pension that is based on non-covered wages. And so, again, yes. if you go to www.ssa.gov and mm -hmm. you look up government pension offset, it really nicely and neatly walks you right through the calculation. And it's a very simple calculation that anyone can do. Exactly. Because, you know, when I do seminars, uh, I always tell them, if you will receive a pension for work, not yes. covered under Social Security, the bottom line is that any benefits that you apply for will be reduced. Absolutely. And depends, you know, in which yes. two group, one of the two groups of federal employees you are, because as you said, some employees have 40 credits, some others don't, but their spouses do, mm -hmm. so they need to get the information. But also in regards to pensions uh, for work not covered under Social Security, it not only applies to the federal government, correct? That is correct. There are state pensions that are not mm -hmm. covered by Social Security. There are local and municipal pensions that are not covered by Social Security as well, as well as what are called special districts. Those mm -hmm. are park districts or local uh, state municipalities that uh, provide for a certain area. Those are special districts that may have had their own pension system mm -hmm. and did not participate in Social Security. Exactly. I know in our area, some of that, those jurisdictions will be the District of Columbia. Correct. The District of Columbia, mm -hmm. it's a great jurisdiction to talk about because like the federal government, they have different tiers. So mm -hmm. the newer tier actually pays into Social Security. The older tier, as they refer to, did not pay into Social Security and behaves very much like the civil service retirement system. And there are also some professions and some groups, specific groups, that did not pay also into Absolutely. the system. So right. some of those groups to talk about them are mm -hmm. railroad workers, some mine workers that were under particular unions, not all mine workers, but some specific unions mm -hmm. did not pay into Social Security. They had their own pension systems. Those are referred to as defined benefit plans. And so they don't necessarily have to pay Social Security benefits, uh, taxes. So they're not covered. They're, they're called non-covered pensions. Mm -hmm. Teachers um, in some states. Absolutely. Police. In California, rescue. California State Teachers Retirement System. Correct. And in New York, the New York State uh, Teachers mm -hmm. Retirement System, the two largest in the country. 
Mm -hmm. uh, certain points they did not pay. Okay. Um, now, where can somebody find resources, how to understand these two provisions better and the impact that these pensions will have on their Social Security benefits? Absolutely. They can go to our website, www.ssa.gov. So you open up your web browser to ssa.gov and you are looking at different pensions or systems that are going to affect your Social Security benefit. Well, what is one of those? One of those for Social Security is the what we call the windfall elimination provision. Just open the web browser if you want to learn more about it. Go to the search, click on search, and then simply type in WEP. Click on search, and that'll bring up the different strings that give you information on the windfall elimination provision. Why is it so important to know this? Because sometimes we get our social security statement and the statement gives you great information, tons of information on your benefits, what you can expect, your wages, what uh, the wages are that were reported to the IRS, and you can then decide whether they're correct or not. Uh, once you do that, once you go through your statement, you realize, wait a second, I work for the federal government or I work for a union that did not pay into Social Security, but I'm going to receive a pension. Well the statement does not take into account these types of what we call offsets. These are uh, pensions that you earned uh, by your work because you work for a particular organization, but they were not taxed for Social Security purposes. Not the pension itself, but the wages that you earned. So that does have an actual impact. Why am I showing you this? Because it's great to get into the website and take a look at the different types of earnings and pensions that could potentially affect your Social Security benefit. There is one other uh, offset that we have on the website. And while we don't have here, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the, G to the search string and then type in GPO, click on search, and this is called a government pension offset. This is a pension that was earned by a spouse who could get Social Security benefits, but is also going to receive or is receiving a pension based on non-covered Social Security wages, meaning wages that were not covered by Social Security. So if they're getting that type of pension and they're going to receive Social Security benefits as a spouse, they could also expect an offset or a reduction in benefits. And the good thing about this particular page is that it walks you through the actual calculation and they can just look up these pensions, uh, non-covered pensions, or just Google pensions for Social Security purposes. It will really take you back to our website. And there's a wealth of information there. Of course, we always tell our viewers, Alfred, that the best way to find information and, and also utilize resources is visiting Social Security's website, socialsecurity.gov. Now, in regards to other pensions, Alfredo, you mentioned something not too long ago in regards to military, military pensions. Right. Do military pensions impact Social Security benefits? So that is an interesting question. Again, we're in Washington, D.C., yes. where we have a wealth of uh, mm -hmm. individuals that either retire from the yes. military or are still in the military. But yes, military pensions are, are particularly of, of interest to us. Why? Well, individuals that served in the military between 1940 and 1954 mm -hmm. did not automatically get credit for Social Security benefits. So those had to be uh, uh, manually done for them. Then between 1954 and 1957, while they weren't getting credit, it wasn't always automatic. So we had to look into that. After 1957, mm -hmm. military wages became covered, but it did not include reservice. It was just for active duty. Mm -hmm. In 1988, that's where the great distinction comes in, where all, all branches of mm -hmm. the services, of the armed forces, uh, active duty, National Guard and Reserves, start getting credit together at the same time. And from then on, they're automatically considered all covered wages. So if you get a pension, which we don't see much, mm -hmm. prior to 1957, then yes, we will look at that and the credits are rated at $160 per credit for those particular individuals. If not, then uh, anything after 1957 is really yeah. considered covered covered wage. Yeah. So your pension from the military in mm -hmm. today's 
uh, wages, it's covered. It does not affect your Social Security benefit. That is great because, as you said before, we have a lot of military uh, facilities within our area. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Now, and in regards to pensions, also in our area, it's so diverse. People from all over the world come, Alfredo. Yes. What about people that come here working for international organizations and they stay here? What about people that actually work here and also have a pension from their countries of origin? What can you tell us about that? That is a great question, Diana. And we are a very cosmopolitan city. We have people from all over. Yes. Uh, we have many international concerns. And those particular uh, pensions are treated this way. Uh, and for those that didn't know, Social Security does have a huge international operation yes. under our Office of International Programs and Office of International Operations. Uh, if somebody worked in a country and say they worked for a period of time, mm -hmm. but did not earn enough wages in that country to earn a pension, mm -hmm. uh, and then they came to the United States, they worked here and earned some credits or actually became uh, fully entitled to benefits, we can actually bring those wages over from the other country mm -hmm. and do what is called totalization. And totalization simply means that we bring it together and we totalize a benefit, an actuality benefit. Mm -hmm. So that, that's where the term comes from. And yes, we can take a pension from another country that we have an agreement with and we have agreements with different countries. Mm -hmm. And I have to say this, and this is a disclaimer, not all agreements are the same they are based on each country and their one size does not fit all. So mm -hmm. uh, what, what I would like to impress is this, is that you could also have worked here and not earn all 40 quarters. Mm -hmm. You could also have earned some quarters in another country. And if we have an agreement with them, yeah. then again, we do a totalization for that as well. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that that is, uh, it's a very complex type of uh, mm -hmm. claim to do, but we can do it. We do it all the time, and it is very well known in this particular area. Exactly. And, and if the person receives a pension from another country and is actually fully insured, as we call it, can Absolutely. receive Social Security benefits, will take that pension from another country as a pension for work not covered under Social Security. Right. So right. it is different, but, but it's a lot of information, Alfredo. Where can somebody go again for resources and information? Again, any individual can go on to www.ssa.gov yeah. and look up totalization and they will get all the information there. Yeah. And especially because uh, we have under that page uh, the agreements for each country. Absolutely. So look for your country of origin, the country mm -hmm. that you will um, have some work there and some work here, and then that way you can find out the specifics in regards to that agreement for that specific country. That's right. Great. Alfredo, I cannot thank you enough My for pleasure. coming. and. Um, spending some time with us to give us expertise on the topic. Uh, good, good information to the viewers. Thank you so much, Ian. My pleasure. Thank you, and I hope this is not the first time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for watching. And once again, we invite you to stay with us because we will always be providing you important information about your Social Security benefits. And at the same time, I invite you to visit the previous shows at Montgomery Municipal Cable. Until next time.